Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, Tropical Depression 2 has formed from Invest 95L. Will it become a major hurricane as it approaches the Caribbean? If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to TropicalTibbets.com for Friday, June 28, 2024. Purple arrows pointing towards Invest 94L in the Western Caribbean. Blue arrows a tropical wave ahead of Tropical Depression 2, which is our black arrow. And then disturbance number 3 is our pink arrow. Here's the vorticity signature, the spin and energy of all of our systems that we are tracking. And you can see the intensity of Tropical Depression 2 compared to the others, which is why it is on its way to becoming a named storm and the others are lacking behind. Here's a close-up view of Invest 94L just east of Belize at this point. It's encountering some wind shear, so that's why a lot of its thunderstorm convection is to the eastern side of its developing low pressure system. Here's the spaghetti track guidance models taking it across the Yucatan Peninsula and on its way across the southwestern portions of the Gulf of Mexico and making a secondary landfall on the east coast of Mexico in about the same region where Tropical Storm Alberto made landfall. Model intensity guidance suggests it could become a tropical storm ball in the Gulf of Mexico, so we'll keep an eye on this one. It's got a 30% over the next two days, as well as over the next seven days of doing so. Here's the latest satellite image of our newly formed Tropical Depression 2 in the main development region. See the low level swirl just to the south and east of this uh, th huge thunderstorm complex that is moving along west at 21 miles an hour, right below our Bermuda Azores high. So it's moving pretty quickly. That could be a key in keeping this suppressed at the moment because it'll be hard to wrap around all this thunderstorm convection completely around the low pressure system. Uh, so we won't expect huge amount of uh, intensification immediately, but as it approaches the Caribbean and if it slows down, as you can see here on the uh, forecast map from the National Hurricane Center, as those dots become closer together, that means it's slowing down, and then we could see rapid intensification when it hits uh, closer to the islands with those very warm waters in and around the Caribbean. Here's the key messages from the National Hurricane Center. On the left is in English, and on the right is in Spanish. You can pause this to take a chance to read it. But here's what the map from the National Hurricane Center is based off, the spaghetti track guidance models showing that this could continue moving in a west-northwest direction or a little bit north-northwest. Uh, so anywhere in the Caribbean has to watch out for this storm as it comes through because the model intensity guidance says we could see a major hurricane as strong as a Category 4. And if you saw my video yesterday, that is because the very warm waters and the very favorable atmosphere conditions can promote this. And then here's our third tropical wave behind Tropical Depression 2. This is now disturbance number 3 that we're monitoring. It's got a 0% chance over the next 2 days, but a 30% chance over the next 7 days in its week, right behind TD2. So it could be a back-to-back -back punch, 1-2 uh, punch it's for the Caribbean if this one develops. So let's take a look on the GFS model, how all this is going to play out over the next 7 days. Purple hexagon is 94, black hexagon is TD2, and pink is disturbance 3. Low wind shear environment for all three storms. That's going to allow these moisture to keep themselves in a, and inundated away from the Saharan air layer to the north for TD2 and the disturbance 3. And we'll see that be very helpful, as you can see two days from now on Sunday the 30th, we have a very strong tropical storm, maybe even a low-grade hurricane at this point, on its way towards the Caribbean. Tropical depression or storm trying to form in the Gulf of Mexico. And then right behind TD2, we have another maybe tropical depression trying to form as well. 
low insure environment continues as we move two days from now, and that's protecting those moisture bubbles from the Saharan air layer. So three days from now on Monday, July 1st, Invest 94L will be making landfall with Mexico at this point, potentially as a tropical storm. We'll keep an eye on that if that's the case. But look at the Caribbean islands just north of Trinidad and Tobago where we could be seeing a major hurricane making landfall through one of these islands. So you have to be on the lookout. Start to prepare now. This is just three days away. And then right behind it, another tropical storm trying to form potentially from Disturbance 3. Low pressure, uh, the pressure from Disturbance, I mean, Tropical Depression 2, three days from now, could be down to 968 millibars. So that's definitely in the Category 3 range for intensity, potentially. And like I said before, we got very warm sea surface temperatures, not only on the surface, but also at depth. 28, 29 degrees Celsius, that is plenty warm enough to uh, sustain a Category 4 hurricane moving through. Four days from now, on Tuesday, July 2nd, we have our Tropical Depression, most likely barrel at this point, hurricane or major hurricane barrel moving into the Eastern Caribbean, and then right behind it, another tropical storm on this model. So that could, depending on if 94L develops in the Gulf, we could see Chris and even Debbie form from all three of these systems. You can see it's got a 1,005 millibar low pressure system behind our 974 millibar low pressure system of Tropical Depression 2, likely Beryl uh, in the Eastern Caribbean. Uh, but that's that you see is now starting to decrease, which continues on to day five because we're going to encounter, on this model run at least, some wind shear when it gets into the Caribbean. So that could uh, be a saving grace for some of the other islands, like the Greater Antilles. So Hispaniola, which is Dominican Republic and Haiti, Cuba, Jamaica, all you could potentially be spared the biggest impacts if this storm weakens after getting into the Caribbean due to this increased wind shear. And the tropical storm trying to develop behind it would also feel the up the impacts of wind shear from the outflow from this hurricane as it moves through. Uh, so we could uh, that could help with the secondary impacts from another storm coming through the Caribbean islands behind it. So the wind shear will allow some dry air to get in, cut off those thunderstorms. So keeping those storms a little bit uh, weaker as they continue into the Caribbean. And that continues as we go into day six and day seven, where they are both completely decimated and destroyed pretty much at that point and no longer showing closed lows, just open waves at this point. That's the GFS. What's the European model showing? Well, European model is a little bit different. We see Tropical Depression II surviving much longer into the Caribbean, potentially making a landfall with Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula as a strong storm as well, potentially still a tropical storm or even a hurricane as it goes through the Caribbean into the Western Caribbean. Why is that? Uh, we have decreased wind shear throughout the whole Caribbean on the European model, and it's a little bit tr tracking further south because high pressure in the Atlantic and over the Southeast United States keeps it low. Whereas on the GFS, you saw it started curving up towards Cuba and Hispaniola, north of Jamaica. High pressure over the southeast United States was a little bit weaker, allowing that to move further to the north. So still a lot to see five, seven days out from now where this storm could be going. Here's where you could see it go using the ensemble models in terms of intensity. The more reds, yellows, oranges is a stronger storm. And then where they spread out is where the track could go. And you can see the very wide track, especially on the GFS, where future barrel Tropical Depression 2 right now could be as far north as the Bahamas or go straight towards Costa Rica and Nicaragua. So very huge spread over the next seven days where this can go. So we'll continue to track 94L as it tries to cross the Yucatan and develop in the Gulf of Mexico. 
Tropical Depression 2, if it's going to rapidly intensify into a major hurricane and threaten the Caribbean islands. And then right behind it, Disturbance 3, if it also tries to develop. If all three do develop into named storms, we would see Beryl, Chris, and Debbie by the time we get to next week. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather, so if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.